So lately, it's been an absolute roller coaster over in the cryptocurrency markets, and consolidations are starting to happen everywhere. All this kicked off with Celsius earlier last month. So Celsius was basically one of the world's leading crypto lending platforms that decided to suspend withdrawals and freeze accounts on its network. Now, this is the same Celsius network that was valued at over $3.25 billion in November, and it services 1.7 million customers. Now, as of today, those customers are losing hope of seeing their money ever again. It was also reported that they also laid off some 150 employees over the weekend. If that wasn't bad enough news for the crypto market, we also had the crypto hedge fund 3 Arrows Capital 3AC ordered to liquidate by courts, which sent shockwaves across the entire crypto industry. As a result of their downfall, which we'll talk about later in this video, we saw many other crypto platforms get into financial trouble, and that really opens your eyes on how intertwined the crypto industry really is. For example, BlockFi, which loaned out money to 3 Arrows Capital, was reportedly given the option by crypto brokerage FTX to be bought for a value of $240 million. That might sound like a lot of money because, well, it is, but relatively speaking, it is not. At the peak of BlockFi's valuation, they were valued at over $4.8 billion. So a sale of $240 million would represent a loss of over 95% from its all-time high valuation. Other firms like Voyager and Babel Finance are also in trouble, and with inflation at all-time highs, interest rates are going up as well. There are just no bullish catalysts for the crypto market in the foreseeable future that would bolster crypto asset prices. And if you pair that with a looming threat of a recession, well, that's what you have right now. Now, many people actually already think that we are in a recession, especially since the Atlanta Fed just came out with a report that the latest Q2 GDP estimate as of July 1st was negative 2.1%. A recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of negative GDP and as you may remember in Q1, we already had a negative GDP reading. So if indeed Q2 does come in negative, we'll officially be in a recession. Now we're gonna talk about all the liquidations and consolidations in the crypto market in today's video and also go over some thoughts I have on where crypto investors could go from here because let's be real, it looks like the crypto winter might be inevitable and it looks like it's coming quite quickly. All right, so after Celsius came out with their news that they would be suspending withdrawals, we also saw the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum fall dramatically. The overall Overall crypto market dropped to below $1 trillion in market value for the first time since 2020, and the price of Bitcoin at the time had dropped to below $24,000 after trading for around $27,000. Ethereum also dropped to below $1,200 from its earlier support of around $1,450. A few days later, it was reported that Three Arrows Capital also had liquidity problems, and Bitcoin further dropped to below the $20,000 mark. Now, Three Arrows Capital is a Singaporean hedge fund that started off as a hedge fund investing in traditional currencies. It started off with one $1.2 million in capital, and in 2017, they actually decided to make the sole focus of their fund cryptocurrency. One of their famous calls was calling the bottom of the Bitcoin market when it was close to $3,800 per Bitcoin, and they loaded up, and their assets under management had once reached an estimated $10 billion as of last year. Their focus was to invest in anything crypto-related, so companies, currencies, NFTs, etc. Now, some of their biggest holdings included Terra Luna, Staked Ether, and the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. As you know, with Luna, it collapsed from more than $40 billion in market value to basically zero in the matter of weeks, losing 98 to 99% of its value. 3AC confirmed that they lost around $200 million from their Luna position alone. According to sources, 3AC had ties to almost all the major crypto firms, and it was said that, quote, they worked with everybody. 3AC would basically borrow crypto and cash from these firms, like BlockFi and Voyager, in an attempt to leverage their crypto positions. So while leverage could multiply your gains, it also works the other way around. If everything crashes, you could end up owing more than your original investment. So the gist is, is that Three Arrows Capital was borrowing way too much, levering up their portfolio with highly risky bets. On June 22nd, the Wall Street Journal reported that Voyager Digital would issue a notice of default to 3AC if it didn't make a full repayment of around $665 million by June 27th. Voyager had reportedly lent 15,250 Bitcoins and $350 million dollars in USDC to 3AC. Just five days later on June 27th, Three Arrows Capital received a notice of default. So later that day, a British Virgin Islands court ordered the liquidation of 3AC after creditors sued the fund for failure to repay its debt. Three Arrows Capital imploded, resulting in massive losses for many crypto giants. So for example, Genesis was facing losses of into the hundreds of millions of dollars. In the meantime, it kept pulling credit lines from various counterparties left and right. So what's interesting is I think that something that was pretty normal for these crypto companies was that the massive risk and leverage that was taken by them, it seemed pretty normal among the entire landscape. Their overall strategy was mostly downplayed by their executives 
executives. Now in a bull market, this probably would have been fine, but in a market where the asset price like Bitcoin is falling 50 to 60% in a matter of weeks, this can cause huge ripple effects across the entire industry. Now, some companies are faring fine during this time. For example, Sam Bankman-Fried's FTX is one of those companies. As I mentioned in the intro, they gave BlockFi an option to acquire them for $240 million, but they also provided them with a $400 million revolving credit facility. In addition, SBF, Sam Bankman fried committed $500 million in financing to Voyager. It doesn't sound like they're gonna get their $600 million back from Three Arrows Capital, so they definitely need this line of credit. They've already pulled $75 million from that line of credit that SBF offered them. Basically, Sam Bankman fried is just bailing out crypto companies left and right at this point, and the reason is because all of these crypto companies are so intertwined with each other. At the end of the day, SBF believes in the crypto industry. His incentives are definitely aligned with the crypto industry doing very well. So if he's able to bail out even his competitors, he's single-handedly basically saving the entire crypto industry. He's even said that he's open to acquisitions of troubled crypto miners in order to help stem contagion. Contagion is the concept that because all these crypto companies are intertwined with each other, if too many of them fall, the entire industry will fall. So what's exactly going on with the crypto miners and why is SBF also considering helping them out? As of right now, crypto miners are also facing margin calls and defaults as they collectively owe up to $4 billion in debt. You see, many crypto mining firms would actually take loans out to create more operational facilities where they could mine more Bitcoin. These facilities would take a lot of capital because you would need to rent warehouse space in addition to buy the equipment required to mine Bitcoin. This seems like a pretty simple problem. Why don't they just cancel the warehouse lease and then just not buy any more equipment? That's probably a question that I would ask myself. The truth is that many mining firms took out loans secured with future orders, meaning that they would have to pay off mining equipment rigs that aren't even making them any money. A lot of these rigs are becoming worth less and less because other miners are willing to sell their rigs at a cheaper price in order to get liquidity. The other reason crypto miners are suffering right now are definitely the higher energy prices. So if you knew from the CPI data this year, electricity prices are up roughly 12% year over year. If you couple this with the price of Bitcoin falling, miners are becoming less profitable and are forced to liquidate some of their crypto holdings to pay for operating costs instead of just holding it. So if you think about the ecosystem more broadly, if the miners were just used to holding Bitcoin have to sell it now? Well, it basically creates downward pressure on the price of Bitcoin, thus creating a mini downward cycle unless the price of Bitcoin would turn around. You can see from this graph on the screen that Bitcoin sold by public miners in 2022 nearly quadrupled in May alone, and that trend is likely continuing. A huge reason why the crypto economy grew so fast was no doubt due to the amount of money supply increasing, plus the quantitative easing and the low interest rates during the pandemic and beyond. With quantitative tightening or QT beginning, many people are not wanting to buy risky assets. As you can see from this chart with the total crypto market cap in the billions, it's basically returned to 2020 levels. We're also seeing suppressed activity in first time active crypto users, which really shows you how cold the crypto market has become. By the way, do you know how to search Google on freezing cold days? Well, you have to use the winternet. That was a joke and it wasn't a very good one, but alas, let's continue. Another sign of the bad crypto times are actually luxury good prices, more specifically watches. This article on Bloomberg came out last week, highlighting wristwatches as the next victims of the crypto meltdown. After reaching record highs earlier this year, the price of desirable watches, including the Rolex Daytona, have fallen considerably. The Subdial 50 Index, which is made up of a basket of the top 50 most traded watch models on the secondary market, nearly doubled in two years from 2020 to 2022. Recently though, it's been giving up some of its gains. Now, the funny thing is the Subdial 50 Index, the majority of it is just comprised of Rolex with a sprinkling of Patek and Audemars in there as well. Most watches that are not so luxury have not appreciated it at all. So for example, the Omega Speedmaster and the Tudor Black Bay models have remained mostly flat. The biggest gainers are shown in this graph. The Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711A retails for $35,000 and at its peak in 2022 was selling on the gray market for $237,000. The AP Royal Oak, similar situation, $23,000 retail, 165K at its peak. And the Rolex Daytona, which retails for $12,000, peaked at 48.7K and is now trading for 44.5K. A huge reason for the peak in prices was due to the combination of a roaring stock market and cryptocurrency 
reaching all-time highs. So many of these investors were kind of spooked by the Ukraine-Russian war, aka geopolitics, as well as inflation, and they chose to invest in more tangible goods like Rolexes. In fact, quote, many of the same factors that boosted watches also lifted demand in the primary market for sneakers, bags, and fine jewelry. Analysts at Jefferies have estimated that crypto wealth accounted for 25 to 30% of growth in US top end sales last year. So in a recession, we will likely see the prices of luxury items dropping in addition to all the other purchases that might not be as necessary. All right, so what should you do as an investor or an investor in crypto during this time? The first thing I'd look to do is to move any crypto that you do have to a well-funded exchange. An exchange like FTX operates lean and hasn't freezed hiring among layoffs in the industry. According to its founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, he says, quote, because we hired carefully, we can keep growing regardless of market conditions. Because we exponentially scaled our revenue and productivity, not our expenses. Binance.us is also another crypto exchange that is still growing and seems well positioned for the future. So you could also move some of your assets over there. Now, there are some non-crypto investments that you can look at during recessionary times as well. Goldman Sachs found that during the past five recessions, the energy, consumer staples, healthcare, and utility sectors consistently outperformed the index. Consumer staple companies typically do better in recessions because they produce goods or services that have relatively inelastic demand. That means there's almost always demand for these goods no matter how good or bad the economy is doing. Now, crypto is hardly something that people need during a recession. So for example, the NFT that you bought is never going to wash your clothes for you. Whereas if you invested in Procter & Gamble, well, your clothes wouldn't be washed by them either. But they do make Tide detergent, and no matter how good or bad the economy is, at least Tide will probably still continue to sell because everybody's gotta wash their clothes. Out of all the sectors in the S&P 500, only one sector has positive returns 12 months before recession, through the recession, and after recession, and that's the consumer staples sector. So this is everything that's going on in the crypto market as of this moment, and with the upcoming CPI data report on July July 13th, we're going to get a good glimpse into how the year is shaping up. If the CPI report reading comes in hot, we may see a further rise in interest rates in July as well. And if this happens, we could see asset prices like homes come down further, as well as cryptocurrency and the tech sector be negatively affected by interest rates as well. Also, make sure to check out my newsletter, Hump Days. It's a completely free publication where we give you updates on the markets and technology. And in fact, a lot of what was covered in today's video was covered in a previous newsletter. Make sure to grab some free stocks down below in the description and also subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.